Hey everyone and welcome to the CityScan's global collaboration. My name is Distanced and today I'll be taking over for Prez and developing some of the city's transit systems. I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do going in, but I still like to plan by actually seeing what I'm going to do. So the first thing I did is I hopped into the map and I took a picture overhead and I actually made a drawing of uh, some of the lines I wanted to make. And it's not exactly how it turned out, but uh, it was still pretty helpful to see uh, things laid out. After I had all that planned out, uh, I actually, the first thing I did is change this main avenue to be an asymmetrical road from Kloss instead of, uh, I think it was just a separated LRT avenue. And this just, it's a little bit better for traffic because we get that extra left turn lane and it, it's a little bit higher capacity. So it should allow for better flow, but also allow for uh, tram traffic, which is great. Uh, and this line, it's just going to be a single line that loops around at the ends. So I basically dipped the line down under the avenue and then made this uh, key loop turnaround. The nice thing about this is that it's out of sight and it's it's not flat terrain anyway, so it wouldn't be useful. Um, so there, I, I didn't see any purpose in taking it over ground and it was the, the best option in this case anyways. I found a, a pretty nice spot for the depot by the shoreline and I thought that the best way to connect it to the main tracks would just be to make a perpendicular connection because that would let us have an even turn in each direction. Uh, the hard part was actually connecting those two tracks from the depot to each other. Uh, they're a little bit finicky as tram tracks usually are and there's some warping going on so I had to mess around with the segment a little bit and move it. Line one actually terminates right here next to the depot so I did the same key loop turnaround that I did on the other end underground and you end up having this nice single line that loops around back and forth. Later on, I also added a physical station and a road to connect it to right here as well. So it, it ended up being like this little area. Um, I tested the line out and uh, one of, you know, an un unintentional side effect of having the asymmetrical avenues as the main road was that actually the stops are sort of forced staggered because you can't make more than one stop per segment. Uh, it depends on the way the road is configured, you know, three lanes in this direction, two lanes in the other. But regardless, I, I spawned in the trains and tried it out and it worked pretty well. Uh, and I, here is where I decided I'd put the exchange since I'd have uh, basically two lines on this loop of road uh, going in either direction that would then come back and meet up at that exchange. And the entire time I was building, I was thinking of places I could expand and, and other things that I could prepare for uh, people that are going to be building after me. And so I made this bridge that goes across the bay and uh, those two lines, so line two and line three, these two, uh, cross that bridge over to the left. And on this stretch of road, they're both going in the same direction. They loop around uh, in a different area. So what I ended up doing with one of the lines is spacing the stops out more so it's like you have an express tram and just a regular tram, just one with more frequent stops and one without on the same stretch of road. Something else that sort of I had the idea as I was doing it was just to take one of the tram stations that I subscribe to and with move it, remove the actual tram track that came with it. And as I found out, it was the perfect fit for this road I have here uh, for both the trams and the cars to squeeze through. So it ends up being this nice integrated station. And I decked it out in all these signs and decals since, you know, it'd be so cramped if you have a single tram there, you can't have any vehicles pass it or anything. And so it's, you know, maybe not the best design. And I imagine that driving there would be a nightmare, but it's interesting. And uh, I thought I'd stick with it. I actually ended up detailing literally every tram stop I made, but it, it would take way too long to show all that. Uh, what I ended up doing with all the tram tracks too is laying down these uh, tram foundation networks just for that little extra bit of detail because usually you have some sort of foundation for the track uh, of a tram. You wouldn't lay those rails directly into the asphalt. Even though that does exist, uh, I wanted to do the foundation. I, th I think it's a little bit more modern. These are really finicky and really tedious since you need to uh, place a node of the foundation at every node of the road and you need to match up the heights and everything. Uh, it was a little bit more tricky at intersections like this where the tracks branch off and you need to match the curve. Uh, and you have to layer them too since there's Z fighting going on if they're on the same Z level. Um, but you know, 
it's, it's nothing too bad. And I think all in all, it was worth it because now when you look at the tram networks, they, uh, they look pretty real, I think. The tricky part with these is really when there's a terrain change since the map isn't perfectly flat, but that's not the only thing I tortured myself with. I decided that every stop along the main, uh, I think it's Murray Avenue, would have a custom animated uh, destination board. And these basically have multiple frames and they switch over. And <laughs> I basically had to line all the text and all the icons up, make sure they're the same size so that when it does change frame, none of those icons move around. And I spent hours on that trying to match it up and all the line colors. And I think it was worth it. It's a, it's a really nice piece of detail. And when you look at the stops, they're interesting. So this is that station by the turnaround near the depot. And I try to detail this one too as much as I can. Uh, this is a pedestrian overpass and building with a modular pack of walkways I found in the workshop. If you combine these with procedural objects, then the limit is literally your imagination. You can scale these up, stretch them out to fit your needs. It's it's really awesome. Uh, and they're, they're colored really well too. They're not too intrusive. And I, I like the little yellow highlights. And so I, I just use them to get from one platform to another and I have them on either side. Um, and to actually deter people from crossing across the tracks, because people still do that, uh, I put a bunch of glass barriers and I ended up doing that at every stop. That's pretty much it for the LRT or trams or whatever you want to call it. I did detail as much as I can, um, but then after that I moved on to doing the rail network. And so this is the Neustadt here, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm so sorry if I'm not. And it comes with a bunch of single tracks, uh, but I removed those and replaced them with double tracks just to save on networks and for organization and just ease of use. Uh, the middle track, I actually replaced with an LRT track or tram track. It's an LRT, LRT track from Klus. And it's, it's just one of my dumb ideas, I guess. There's no real purpose for me doing that, but I thought, hey, it would be cool, you know, have something original. So this goes forward, it goes further into the map and then under an interchange. And I thought that it would be an interesting form of rapid transit, uh, but you know, I didn't end up making any lines with the trains or, or that stretch of uh, LRT track. So it, it'll be interesting to see uh, what the other guys do with it. So this is the main and I guess only uh, rail overpass on this side of the station. Uh, and that's because this is the only road that crosses over to the other side. I spent some time on this, getting it to look all nice uh, with these arches from Revo. And that's that's something I really like about the railway mod, is just the diversity and how much uh, versatility you have with the networks you choose, because you can really fit any situation. There's so many out there. These two tracks on the end of either side, so these single tracks like the one I'm moving right now, I ended up removing and uh, joining them to those double tracks a little bit earlier on, just uh, because they didn't really have a purpose and those double tracks uh, go in separate directions to join back to the main line. The idea is that you could have commuter rail or some sort of passenger service um, by branching back off of the main line into a different line, but I, I sort of left it up to whoever will decide to do that. So there's a lot of options. And I, I hid these floating tracks on this side with just this, uh, I think it's a wall uh, for Revo's rail yard. He has some pretty nice walls. <laughs> and after I had those in place and a little bit of terraforming, I, I, I found out that I just have this random river on this side. So I, 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 I've been playing a lot of infra and they have a lot of these water tunnels. And I thought this would be really fitting. So I took some of Ronix's tunnels, I, I changed their shape with procedural objects, and I just sort of stuck them. And again, I, I, I guess their purpose is up to your imagination. Um, you, I think I ended up putting a water outlet in them, and so the water's coming out of them. Uh, I think it would make a little bit more sense if it was pumping water in. And, you know, that would be the water supply for the city, but it doesn't really matter. It looks cool. I stuck some lights onto it. It looks pretty great. Keeping up with my level of detail, which, you know, may be unnecessary, but I'll leave that up to your judgment. Um, I, so I, I stuck some of these little, I think they're Japan rail underpass buildings or something. like that. I don't remember the name, but they, they fit really well. They're flat, so you can just clip them right in. And I, I stuck them under those arches to fill some blank spaces. 
And I, I sort of went all out on the detail on the elevator tracks. I made custom catenary masts using, of course, Revo's packs. Uh, and I, I put them all around the platforms. And there wasn't really a real reason to that. I just thought it looked cool with these big towers holding up the wires. And uh, basically you can get rid of the catenary masts that spawn, it, spawn in at nodes with network structures, uh, sorry, network skins too. Uh, and you just set the catenary to invisible. There's so many tools for City Skylines now. There's a mod practically for anything you can think of. If you have an idea, all you need to do is spend some time in the workshop and you'll find it and you can make it. Every time I go on the workshop, I find something new and interesting or something I haven't thought of. And I love that. There's always this stream of content. Uh, some footage I thought worth sharing uh, is actually something I don't remember why I did but I took a road and I renamed it to Guam. So let's give a round of applause to Guam Road, everybody. Very great job, Guam Road. Now, Guam Road is something truly special, but the last thing I did is actually connect those station tracks to the main line, which you can see here going across the map. And it's basically just a T-junction. So you have the double tracks going out in each direction and the LRT line goes under the main line and out under an interchange. And that, that's all it really is. And I upgraded this arched section that goes over Murray Avenue to this uh, metal truss. And I think it came out looking really well. It gives it this nice metal industrial look. Anyways, that's about it for my side of things for this project. Um, I hope we left enough for everyone to work with. It's detailed, <laughs> so there's that at least. Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what everyone will do with the things I left and where they'll take them because everyone has such great ideas. Um, so that'll, that'll be really interesting to see. Uh, this series continues daily and tomorrow's video is going to be by Taser here. So keep an eye out for that and uh, I'll see you next time.